the waiting is over, the baby is here. We will rejoice in his birth, for he came to bring salvation to all. Good evening and welcome to our worship service this evening. We are happy and glad that you're able to join us in this most wonderful and beautiful night as we celebrate the birth of the Christ child. We are grateful for you, for those who are also worshiping with us online. Thank you for being here and joining us in this wonderful time. As we prepare our hearts for worship, let us remind ourselves of our mission. And so as a community of faith, we worship the triune God. We are called to love and serve all of us, people and creation, through word and deed. Let us prepare our hearts to worship. Let us continue the confession and forgiveness in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Rejoicing in the good news that God and sinners are reconciled in Christ, let us confess our need for forgiveness. God of everlasting love, we confess that we have lived in captivity to the fear of death. By our actions and by our neglect, we have resisted your good and gracious will. Free us from anxiety and distraction. Pass us our sin and enter in. Give us a new birth of hope as we welcome the child born to save us. Christ the Lord. Amen. You are my children. I am your Savior, says our God, who has redeemed us, who lifts us up and carries us all our days. 
In mercy and loving kindness, God forgives us all our sins for the sake of Jesus, who delights to call us sister and brothers. Amen. of our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, Lord made flesh, born of Mary, be with you all.
God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden, and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken, is on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors, and all the garments rolled in blood, shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He, he it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. 
all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go down to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. And so they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Please be seated. A rural church began the lovely Christmas tradition of taping a live nativity scene on the front lawn. It became the talk of the small community. A visitor driving through town stopped and admired the performance, but one feature troubled him. They were three wise men, were carrying heavy canvas hoses, and they wore fire helmets. Unable to come up, with an explanation on his own, the tourist went to one of the church members who stood by. Why the fire hoses and helmets on these three wise men, he asked. Well, the church lady shook her head and in disgust replied, You people never read the Bible. Well, he assured her that he did, but couldn't recall anything about firemen in the Bible. The lady indignantly pulled her Bible out from under her arm and riffled through the pages, finally jabbing her finger at one particular passage. Putting the good book right up the face, she said, See, it says right here, the three wise men came from a fire. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, where two or three are gathered, you promise to be with us. And so we thank you for your presence. We thank you for coming into this world to bring salvation to all. We thank you for the special gift of the Christ child. We pray in all of the Lord that you will bless us with your word as we rejoice in his birth, bringing salvation and good news to all. And we ask this in the name of the Christ child, Jesus. Amen. Well, well, well. If you were to ask my mom, God bless her soul, or any of my siblings or any of my friends, they will 
definitely tell you that I am no angel. But here's the thing. Angel or not, tonight I'm bringing you the greatest, the good news of great joy. Great joy to you and to me and to all people is born in this world a Savior who is the Messiah, who is the Lord, who is the promised one. Now I'm quite sure you will certainly agree with me when I say the songwriter got it correct when he, write, when he wrote, it is the most wonderful time of the year, right? People seem to be friendlier and welcoming, more generous at this time. There seems to be such a happy feelings around in the air, so much good cheer and happiness around. It is just the most wonderful time of the year. Many at this time will travel from far and near to be with their families and friends. The food, the festivities, light and decoration, sharing of gifts all highlight this wonderful time of the year. And besides, as we know, in this season, this time of the year, the stores, the stores are full of discounts and sales, which we know comes in very handy, right? Especially when you have to get that gift that need to be purchased for a friend and families. And yes, as we may know, although it can be fun purchasing the gifts for that special person, it is not just about buying a gift for someone. It's not just about sharing a gift, but it's really about showing that someone, that special one that you really and truly care for them. Well, at this most wonderful and beautiful time of the year, my dear beloved, we are gathered tonight, this evening, to celebrate the greatest gift given to us all, the gift of the Christ child, baby Jesus. It is God's gift of love and grace that comes in the Christ child because God really and truly cares for us. In this gift wrapped in the human body of a child, God brings us peace and love and joy and hope and most importantly, the Bible says salvation. Salvation for all people. The writer of Titus says, the appearance of God's grace in Jesus Christ brings salvation for all humanity. In this most unconventional way, my dear brothers and sisters, God's love has come to and for the whole human race. In this Christ child, God has manifested a saving grace. And it is precisely grace because in this Christ child, you see, we see the undeserved love of God. Not only it is a saving grace, but it is a redeeming grace because the love of God is active and is self-sacrificing. The Bible tells us that the shepherds, when they saw that in the baby Jesus' face, they saw that he will be the one who would lead live a perfect life and die an innocent death just to save us from sin, death, and hell. The Bible also says that the one who has appeared and will appear again came for us and for the human race to save and to deliver us from evil and make us whole again. And so in faith we behold this wonderful thing that we ponder tonight that Christ the Savior is born. God's promise of redemption is now fulfilled in the Christ child who has come. With this good news, my dear brothers and sisters, 
Let the dawn of his redeeming grace shine upon us, for it is for us sinners that he came into this world and he born. To be the sacrificial lamb to free us from the condemnation of all of our sins. Let the dawn of his redeeming grace shine upon us, for he has come to deliver us from the evil one and from the brokenness of this fallen world. Let the dawn of his redeeming grace shine upon us who have lost loved ones, who may be feeling sad, dumb, and out, and brokenhearted, and who mourn in this valley of the shadow of death, who mourn their loved ones. For his light, the Bible tells us, swallows up the darkness of death. Let the dawn of his redeeming grace shine upon us with comfort and healing. For he has come to be our refuge and strength, a very present help in our time of trouble. The child born in Bethlehem has redeemed us from death, and all who died in him, the Bible says, are delivered from this land of dying and are welcomed into the heavenly home, the land of the living. I say to you this evening, may the dawn of his redeeming grace brings us all great peace, joy, hope, today and always. My dear beloved, the message for Christmas Eve is very clear and simple. In the Christ child, the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. It is truly what makes this the most wonderful time of the year. May you and yours have a very blessed and happy Christmas, a healthy and a safe New Year. Amen.
Creed on page 104. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who was spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Love proclaims that a Savior has been born to us. Inspire your church throughout the world to proclaim the good news of Jesus' birth to all who seek salvation, hope, and new life. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Love whispers to a weary world that the time for rest and restoration has come. Maintain healthy cycles of wake and sleep for all creatures. Where light pollution disrupts natural rhythms, encourage new practices. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Love cries to a warring, warring world that the time for peace is at hand. Direct those in power who make decisions on behalf of others that they nurture and sustain all that is healthy, good, and holy. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Love sings through the wails of a newborn baby. Respond to all who cry out in pain, despair, or need this night, especially Lois Hirschberger, Winnie Ferguson, Patty Paul, Beth Connolly, Linda Bartleson, Lynn Lepo, Danny Vile, Marty Danielson, David Erdman, Elizabeth Rhinus, Don Farnham, Jim Rhinus, Joanne Walkanik, Denise Robinson, Judy Lamb, Jeff Paulson, Eileen Kirsten, Donald Robinson, John Schwenk, Pat Gallagher, Valerie Mahalik, Dee Grover, Anne Marie Winter, Elizabeth Mahalik, Edie Williams, Linda and Fred Winter, and my family on the passing of my mother, Effie Schaefer as long as everyone else that we name aloud and silently in our hearts. Bring comfort to those for whom separation, grief, or loss makes the Christmas season especially difficult. Merciful God, our prayer. love murmurs words of comfort to a newborn child and exhausted parents. Bless no one expecting parents or caregivers, especially those who are alone or afraid this night. Pour out your love upon families of every kind. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Good and gracious God, we know you came into this world to sustain us with your love. And so we pray a special prayer for Sister Gail and her family as they mourn the loss of her mom. We pray for all who have lost loved ones this year that you will give them the strength to remind us that you came to save us from all that the world shows on us. We ask for comfort and for peace and strength for the days ahead. Merciful God, God's ever-present love is proclaimed through the faithful who came before us. And so we give thanks for Mary, John the baptizer, Elizabeth his mother, Joseph the dreamer, and all who point towards your love. Merciful God, Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us. 
In Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Now the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's take a moment to share the Lord's peace with each other. Lord's peace of those who are worshiping online with us. May you feel in His presence too. Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. Bless the gifts we offer this night, and let them be a blessing for others. With the trees of the field, with all earth and heaven, we shout for joy at the coming of your Son. Amen. Amen. Well, let us continue with a great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus, he took bread, and he gave thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gather into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. For our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, the land, the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's manger, at Christ's table, come, see what God makes known for you.
body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Great and gracious God, we thank you that in this holy meal, the true light has come to dwell in us. As we return into the world you love, may we take to all people the good news of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. At this time, we ask that you please stand as you are able, turn on your flashlight, and hold it up so the light can shine for all to see. Jesus, the bright morning star, shines light in the world. By day and night, he shines for all to see. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of our lives. Sing to God a new song, a song of hope, joy, and peace around the world. God, we turn to you in prayer. We ask that you will be with Linda and Fred. As we have heard, they had to go to the hospital. We pray that you will be with them and shower your blessing upon them. We also pray for Carol. As we heard, Edith had fallen. We pray, O oh God, that you will care for her for the days ahead. Now, Almighty God, the one who is and who was and who will be, the Word made flesh the holy and life-giving Spirit bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen.
Rejoice in Christ our Savior. Thanks be to God.